As of 8 o'clock Monday morning, Stanley Gaines, if he fails to comply with the directive, uh, his salary will be terminated. He says that you have no right to order him to do that. I don't intend to order him to do anything or anybody else. I intend to comply to the letter of the report, and that will call for termination of his salary or anybody else's salary that is in conflict of interest at that time. I think the steering committee was aware of the possible consequences when it took its vote. Uh, but I think that that's one of the factors that, that caused it to take that vote. I think the steering committee was saying that, uh, uh, that you know, that they're a contractor with DCA, but uh, that they're not uh, under uh, DCA's direct control. And uh, that's a very important point. The threats like this are not going to keep you from going through with your suit? Oh, no, not at all. I thought uh, it was a, a good hockey game. Uh, I thought uh, both teams played well. It was a physical game. Uh, we had our chances to score and couldn't put the puck in the net in the first period. I think if we would have, it would have been a little different game. It was a typical playoff uh, hockey game. Did Tulsa play any better than you anticipated they might? I don't know if they played any better last night. Uh, uh, we just uh, couldn't put the puck in the net, Jerry, in, in the first period. In the second period, we had a lot of chances. and. Uh, just didn't get any bounces, that's all. Uh, we'll get them tomorrow night. Do you think the crowd should have been bigger for an opening uh, game for Adams Cup playoff? Well, I don't know, Jerry. Uh, this is my first year here, and uh, I don't know for sure how many there were here last night, probably 3,500 or so. Uh, I thought maybe it would be a little bigger crowd, but uh, I guess you can't complain. You're going to take it to them again tomorrow night then, right? Yeah, we'll get, go get them tomorrow night, Jerry. Well, Vern, I think it'll decide the whole thing. I think we're down to uh, a series. It's uh, two out of three for either ball club. It's going to decide the Southwest Conference champion. And, of course, this is where we hope to be at this stage of the season. And uh, going into this series, we have a one-game lead. We have a 9-3 record, and Texas is sitting on an 8-4. Of course, there's still two other contenders, Rice and A&M at 7-5. Uh, and five. It's playing this coming weekend also. They can get in the picture. But I firmly believe that the uh, outcome of this series on a two out of three basis will definitely decide the Southwest Conference champion. What is the remainder of the schedule for TCU in Texas? Well, of course, Texas has a perennial uh, tough ball club to play in A&M, although they do get them at home. But A&M's improved in leaps and bounds since we played them earlier in the season. I know they uh, clubbed a good tech ball club, 21 to 6 one game out there last year. So Longhorn's going to have a tough time with A&M. Of course, again, we've got the uh, always tough Mustangs, and any time the Mustangs and the Frogs get together any place, it's always good uh, series. So we've both got tough remaining series, but like I said, if we can take two out of three ball games, that's going to give us a two-game lead with uh, three games to go, and the old Frogs ain't going to blow that. Tim Curry charges that Doug Crouch is not fit to serve as district attorney because of his past associations with well-known gangsters. In a commercial announcement used on the radio earlier this week in Fort Worth, Curry accused Crouch of being arrested with a teenage girl while riding a freight train. He also accused Crouch of being involved in the shooting death of Robert Macklin in 1965 during Crouch's former term as district attorney. In an appearance on News 8 Etc. this morning, Curry said he feels justified in revealing the information, although he may be sued for libel. I asked Curry if the allegations amount to mudslinging. Crouch held a breakfast and news conference in Fort Worth the same time that Curry was making his charges against the DA on television. Crouch refused to answer any questions about the charges and refused a telephone interview on News 8, etc., while Curry was on the air. Crouch did say that Curry's campaign chairman, Cato Hightower, is not really Curry's campaign chairman. Crouch said he visited with Hightower yesterday at his farm in Hood County. He said Hightower had not authorized the use of his name in Curry's campaign. 
and that he doesn't even know where Kerry's campaign headquarters are. If you're one of 1,000 privileged persons lucky enough to have a free parking pass from the city, you can start collecting your nickels and dimes. At the end of this month, all courtesy car passes will be void. The Dallas City Council has voted that everybody, except handicapped persons and foreign dignitaries, has to pay these parking meters. For years now, members of the press, as well as county, state, and federal government employees, have been issued free passes signed by the police chief. Those cards put on the dashboard allowed parking free of charge in metered zones, but only on official emergency business. Assistant City Manager Eugene Denton says the city is revoking that privilege because people are using the cards for free overtime parking on routine and personal business, taking up valuable parking spaces in front of the county courthouse, the post office, and also in front of businesses here in downtown Dallas. We had received a number of complaints from citizens, uh, citizens who'd been parking downtown, and when they'd come back after overparking, they'd have a ticket on their car, and they'd look at the next car, and they'd have something like courtesy parking pass, and they'd say, well, what kind of a person here in our city is so privileged that he has a special, special parking pass? And uh, each one of the passes states on it what agency it is that has the free parking permit. So. Uh, people here in Dallas felt, well, I, I pay for the streets, I help maintain them. Uh, how come some people get to park free and I get a ticket? And we felt that out of equity, everyone should have the same chance at the dwindling number of parking meters that are available on prime parking space on downtown streets. If you've been one of the unprivileged majority who balks at feeding the meters, you may feel better now just knowing that everybody is paying for parking. Martha McIntyre, Channel 8 News on the Move in downtown Dallas. Dick, you had all kinds of experiences on the road. You lose two in the ninth by one run and then get blasted 14 zip. Uh, I guess the close ones have to hurt a little more. Yeah, they do. There's not much you can say when you get beat 14 to nothing. You could, could put Babe Ruth and Sandy Colfax out there, and if they're not going your way, it's just one of those games. But uh, the two games we lost by one run... Uh, it did hurt because we could have come home uh, three and one rather than one and three, and I think it would have made a, a big difference. But I think it shows that we're going to be in a lot of ball games. So. Dick, with the exception of the 14-0 game, the pitching staff uh, seemed to perform very well. Yes, they did. I was uh, rather surprised because uh, in all three games uh, their control was real sharp, and uh, and I think they went longer than uh, even Ted expected. And uh, you hate to take someone out in the fifth, sixth inning when you know it's a shutout or a one-run game. So uh, I think they surprised everyone. I really do. I wouldn't say it feels good. It makes you sort of, uh, you have to start, you know, you start early in the week, you start thinking about how you're going to pitch them and things. Uh, you look at their records, they're pretty awesome, but then you have to think about, you know, how you're going to pitch them. And, uh, you know, of course, a lot of that's up to Dana, you know, the catcher. But as a pitcher, I have to start thinking about, you know, the different ways I'm going to pitch them. Well, you pitched against Texas last year as a freshman. You're only a sophomore. Uh, how do you think your style is going to change this year? Well, uh, maybe some of the jitters will be gone. Last year as a freshman, I think I walked out on the field and there were about oh, 5,000 people up there and they weren't too friendly. And uh, uh, This year it's going to be nice to pitch in front of a hometown crowd. feel like the people on your side instead of against you. Uh, Jerry is uh, very slow and it's very chippy, and uh, the puck was bouncing quite a bit. And uh, I don't know. I think uh, both, both teams had the same ice, but uh, they got two breaks, and we didn't get any. And uh, I think it'll be a different story Friday. On your breakaway there toward the end, uh, the puck just wouldn't lie down for you, would it? Is that the proper expression? Well, yeah. Roger gave me a real good pass, and as I went in, I was looking for a spot, and I pushed the puck ahead. And as I pushed the puck ahead, it just flipped up on its edge, and I went in to shoot. I had lots upstairs on his right hand side, but. Uh, the puck just started rolling, I just missed the net. Uh, I don't know. I can blame it on the ice, but I can blame it on myself, too. We've been real well pleased, Jerry, through our first seven workouts and our scrimmage on Saturday. The defense got the best of us. They're doing an outstanding job, but we've been real well pleased to this point.
Now you have two big scrimmages this year. The first one coming up in the Cotton Bowl. Do you think the offense will uh, bounce back? I think so. They've talked a lot about it this week, and of course we've put in a few other things that the defense hasn't had an opportunity to work on, and I believe we'll be ready Saturday, yes. Will Mustang fans see anything different when the Red and Blue take over the ball this fall? Well, not any more so than SMU teams in the past. We'll be wide open, Jerry. We're going to be explosive, we hope, but we're going to have a wide open attack. We'll be real multiple. How is uh, Bobo's injury? Do you think he'll be all right for the rest of the spring? He worked out yesterday, and he was limited in some of the things that he could do, but we were real well pleased with the progress he made, and I talked to him this morning, and there was very little stiffness in the knee, so we're real optimistic that he'll, that he'll get to play this Saturday. Tribal governments, in the first instance, are, are, have all the powers of any, of any government. Uh, Congress has plenary authority over that government, and it can uh, diminish those authorities as it sees fit. And through the years it has done so, it has uh, diminished and taken over some of the powers that would have been tribes. Beyond that, it has authorized some states to assume authorities over tribes. And even without, beyond that authority, which was granted by Congress, some states have initiated measures to uh, extend their authority to over Indians and Indian tribes on their, on their reservations, which is being resisted by the tribes.